ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm John Weeks and this is The Leader. There's more bad news for the pound as it dropped to its lowest level against the dollar since 1971. Early this morning, sterling fell to just $1.03 in early Asia trade before regaining some ground through the day to north of $1.08. This latest drop is thought to be in response to Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng's mini budget announcement on Friday, which featured the biggest round of tax cuts for 50 years, as well as further comments he made over the weekend, suggesting yet more tax cuts were on the agenda. This morning, Labour's shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, explained how the drop in sterling could impact interest rates. When sterling falls, it means that things that are priced, particularly in dollars, go up in price. That includes gas and oil, but it also includes other imports. And that means more pressure on inflation. She was speaking to BBC Breakfast. It's thought the Bank of England may have to take action to try to give the pound a boost, which would involve hiking interest rates even further. So what does this latest fall in our currency mean for the UK? Is it all bad news? And how might things improve? Joining me now is the Evening Standard's political editor, Nicholas Cecil. So, Nick, we've seen the pound drop again against the dollar, seemingly in reaction to the Chancellor's budget on Friday. What can you tell us about it? Well, this seems to have been triggered by fresh comments over the weekend by Kwasi Kwarteng, where he suggested that there could be more tax cuts in the pipeline. Now, markets were already nervous, but after he'd made kind of £45 billion of tax cuts in his mini-budget, and they seem to have been spooked again, and certainly in early trading in, in Asia, Asian markets, the pound fell to around one zero three against the dollar. When markets opened in the UK, um, the pound recovered a bit more to about one zero seven. Uh, certainly it hit an all-time low of 103, which is the lowest since decimalisation in 1971. And obviously, as you mentioned, it's the lowest in over 50 years. How significant a drop is this in the grand scheme of things? This is very significant for the government. And there's growing talk this morning that the Bank of England, its Monetary Policy Committee, will for- be forced to do an, an emergency intervention, possibly within the next week or so, to try and prop up the pound. It's so weak and it's, it's heading possibly towards parity with the dollar. And you mentioned there the rumours the Bank of England could hike interest rates again in response to this. What have you heard about that and how would that help the pound? If the Bank of England puts up interest rates, then you get a better return on investing in in Britain and therefore it makes it a more attractive currency. So it would support the pound if interest rates go up. But if interest rates go up, so do many people's mortgage bills. And we're already in the middle of a cost of living crisis. And the last thing that many homeowners want is now to see a hike in their mortgage bills. The other factor here is that the government's cost of borrowing is also increasing. Now, the Chancellor has gone on a kind of £72 billion debt splurge to fund his tax rises and his huge energy bill support package to help keep gas and electricity bills down this winter. There are also rumours if the pound drops even further, perhaps to parity with the dollar, backbench Conservative MPs might not back the Chancellor's plans. Is that likely? And what would happen then? There's already kind of signs of growing unrest among the Tory backbenchers this morning. There are a number of Tory MPs who didn't support Liz Truss during the the leadership campaign. One of them is Mel Stride, who's the chairman, the Conservative chairman of the Commons Treasury Committee. And he's criticised Kwasi Kwarteng for his weekend comments. He tweeted this morning, it would be wise to take stock of how through time the markets weigh up recent economic announcements rather than immediately signalling more of the same in the near term. So Mel Stride is not a supporter of the trust government. He was a Rishi Sunak backer. So it's not hugely surprised to see this. But again, it is a sign that this trust could face trouble on the back benches if things don't calm down very soon. Now, the Chancellor has hinted at more tax cuts to come. What more is he expected to do? And will more cuts just exacerbate the problem? We don't have any, anything firm yet. This government, and Mr Kwarteng is a very self-confident man, has shown no signs of kind of pulling back from their 
agenda to, to slash taxes to try and generate greater growth for the country. Their philosophy argues that you try and increase the size of the cake rather than focusing so much on how you distribute the nation's wealth. They argue that if you make the cake bigger, there's more for everyone to have. But certainly at the moment, uh, the, the British economy is looking in, in quite troubled times. And I understand there are reports hedge fund bosses made small fortunes by betting that sterling would fall, suggesting elements of the mini budget were leaked ahead of time. I know you've done a write up on it, Nick. What can you tell us about that? There's a suggestion that the Chancellor's decision to ax the top rate of tax, the 45p rate, some suggestions that people knew about that in economic circles two days or a couple of days before it happened. Reports suggest that hedge fund managers, some of them have been shorting the pound, making a lot of money. And so Labour have asked the city regulator to look into whether there's a- any possible link between these apparent leaks of the mini budget and hedge funds making l- large profits. And these two recent drops in the pound, are they a warning sign of what's to come or could it just be a temporary blip? It could be a temporary blip. The danger for the government is that when the markets smell blood and smell weakness in the pound, that they pile in even more. And then the the, the economic crisis deepens and the government may really have to kind of reconsider some of its strategy. If it's just going to press on without making any change in direction, without tacking a bit, then it's very much left to the Bank of England to push up interest rates to try and make sure that the pound doesn't fall any further. Let's take a break now. In part two, Matthew Lesh, an expert from the Institute of Economic Affairs, gives us his take on the drop in the pound. It's worth noting that a weaker pound does make life easier for British exporters, could even encourage some overseas investment into the UK. Joining me now is Matthew Lesh, the head of public policy at the Institute of Economic Affairs. So, Matthew, first of all, how worried are you about this drop in the pound? Look, concerned but not freaking out, as many commentators seem to be online today. Uh, It it seems like there's a longer story going on here in terms of the the relative fall of the pound uh, against the US dollar, along with a lot of other currencies, which reflects the strength of the US dollar uh, and the Federal Reserve's willingness to put up interest rates. at the same time, there does seem to be some jitters in the markets about um, Kwasi Kwarteng's budget on Friday. It's notable, though, that uh, most of the decline overnight um, has been uh, replaced by a recovery later on in the morning and, and this afternoon. So it doesn't seem like the, this is going to have necessarily the, the bigger long term impact that people thought it was going to have first thing this morning. That's it. And obviously, you see the pound drop. The natural reaction probably is to, to panic a bit or to be a bit concerned. What does it impact? I mean, it clearly, it clearly has fallen and, and that has consequences. There are going to be higher costs for imported goods as well as inputs for some producers. And that's probably going to make a contribution to the UK's inflationary issues. On the other hand, though, it's worth noting that a, a weaker pound does make life easier for British exporters, could even encourage some overseas investment into the UK. But the central point here is that unlike historically, the government and as a society, we don't really have a target for the exchange rate. There isn't a level that we want the exchange rate to be at and and we're willing to intervene with taxpayer money to keep it there. That's not one of the focuses of our policy making. It's only really an issue to the extent to which it's impacting inflation, in which case it uh, is something that will be addressed secondarily through changing interest rate policy over time. It's not something that necessarily is the be-all and end-all of anything. The real question we have to ask ourselves is what are the fundamental underlying position of the UK economy and what does the announcements last week and the government's policy direction mean for economic growth? You mentioned the Bank of England there and it's thought that they will try to sort of recover some value in the pound by hiking interest rates again. Do you think that's the best tool in their arsenal to sort of fix the situation? Or are there other ways of boosting sterling? Well, it's it's worth noting the Bank of England's mandate is not to 
ensure the pound is of a certain value. That, that's not what they do. Now, the Bank of England would look at the pound as an indicator of potential inflationary pressure. So if the pound goes down, prices can go up of, of the goods that we import. A lot of consumer goods in the UK are ones that we import from other countries. And therefore, through that mechanism, they might have some concern that this is a leading indicator of higher inflation and therefore um, need a put up interest rates as a result. Now, putting up interest rates is, is part of the solution here because that's what attracts capital into the UK. Um, in, in the classic economic 101 model, when you have higher interest rates and interest rates that are higher even than what the market might expect, you get higher value of, of the pound because people want to put money into the UK because they can earn more interest on, on the cash they're holding in the UK. Now, part of the issue is last week, the market was expecting a 0.75% increase in the interest rates in the UK. Now, that the, it only ended up being 0.5%. So as a result of that, you can see the impact is a movement of currency out of the UK. So you, you would think that if the bank is willing to take stronger steps in, in the next meeting of the, of the MPC, the result would be the pound would strengthen versus other currencies. The flip side of things is, you know, mortgages going up. And this drop appears to be bad as well for gas and petrol prices, which are priced in dollars. Do you think this drop and these proposed measures mean the cost of living crisis could be exacerbated? I mean, it's it's possible that it, it will make a marginal difference in terms of worsening inflation, the cost of living crisis. It's worth noting at the same time here that the broader story about gas and oil prices is that they are going down substantially to the point where the government's interventions might end up costing a lot less than was previously estimated as a result of the fall in global prices. There's a number of factors for that. Most simply, as the prices have gone up, more producers are focused on Europe. There's been a real focus in storage, particularly in Germany, of gas to ensure that there's enough supplies for the winter. So there's not the same level of concern in, in the gas and oil markets in terms of global supply. And that seems to have balanced out a bit, which means we're not going to certainly never going to see some of those 15, 20 percent inflation figures that were previously talked about and concerned about earlier this year. And something I found quite interesting, you, you tweeted earlier about a, a similar situation to what's happening now that happened in the 80s, where the government's budget received huge sort of criticism and opposition then. Can you just tell us about that and, and what happened afterwards? Mm. So in March 1981, 364 economists wrote a letter to the Times opposing Geoffrey Howe's budget. Uh, and at the same time, a lot of big business was concerned. The CBI wasn't particularly supportive of the government. And this is a broader story of the Thatcherite era, which is despite, in retrospect, we see it as this kind of uh, pro-business, pro-growth agenda. And, and in, it was quite effective in terms of the subsequent um, years you can see after that budget. Uh, it wasn't necessarily something that there was a consensus about at the time. There, there was a lot of opposition, a lot of concern. Inevitably, when you're upsetting the status quo, existing um, actors are, are going to express their opposition. The real test here is not really for when it comes to the trust government, whether or not the pound goes up or down in the next few weeks or days or hours. It's really about whether their policies will work to deliver longer term economic growth. Now, there is some potential there from the tax cuts. Uh, in terms of creating incentives to work, incentives to invest. The question, though, I think more fundamentally is what are they going to do on the regulatory side? Are they going to carry through with some of the regulatory reform, for example, on planning and, and housing to ensure we can get more houses built uh, it, to build our, our broader prosperity um, for the UK? And then that, in, in the longer term, everything else will take care of itself, including the value of the pound. OK, so you think it's, it rests more on the regulatory side of things that, than anything else at this stage? Well, I think that's the, the lever the government can pull to deliver economic growth. Um, it, it will ultimately be a question of, of regulatory reform. What can be done about e retained EU law? Is that something that the UK can fix? Uh, what can be done about planning? What can be done about childcare regulation? So many other areas of, of regulatory reform that the government has flagged an interest in uh, and, and could deliver a lot of growth. Obviously, there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to, you know, the UK economy. Changes, like you mentioned, that could come in terms of regulation change and things like that. Can you give a forecast in any way for the next sort of few weeks and months based on what we know so far? Or is it simply a case of we just have to wait and see? I mean, it is very much a case of wait and see. It, it, the, the kind of reforms that the government's doing, and I suppose their economic strategy, their go-for-growth strategy, is not going to have dividends in, in the coming 
weeks or even potentially the coming months. It's really a longer term strategy to refocus government policy in the direction of, of economic growth. It, it is, in some respects, a bit of a gamble because they put a big down payment in terms of tax reform. Now, that's got to ultimately pay off through a, a bigger economy and, and more prosperity. But if, if that works as something that could very much have a, a very positive longer term impact, um, some of the shorter term things like the price of gas or the exchange rate or whatever else it may be will we'll jump around. But it's really that longer term question that I think is at the heart of the government's policy making. There's more on this story in the Evening Standard newspaper and at standard.co.uk. That's The Leader. Thanks for listening. We're back tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock.